in this day, we've been getting a little lax with our COVID protocols. And so make sure that you're six feet from somebody else unless you're related to them. It'd be like, um, I would like to have you move up one pew. That'd be great. With the number of cases of COVID going up and the number of deaths can start to go back up again, I want to make sure we're all safe so that we can continue to be together, okay? If you have a cell phone, would you please turn your cell phone um, off or to vibrate so that it doesn't go off the worship service? Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 111, verse 2. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Have you please stand? Remember, if you choose to sing, no louder than your speaking voice, please. Done. 
Please stand for the glory of God.
right? This is the brown paper bag sermon today. Um, this is, I don't use it much anymore, but this is a spittoon. Now, I want to tell you a story about a spittoon that happened in my own life. And then we're going to talk about mercy and grace. My grandfather was a chewer of tobacco. Um, he liked the, I think it's old new plug. It looked like a Hershey bar to a kid. And so I thought he was eating a Hershey bar. We took a long distance trip together. And I was between my grandmother and my grandfather in the front seat. And grandpa's platoon, which was a Folgers can, was right between my feet. On this trip from St. James, Missouri to, I think, St. Louis, he never missed once. He never missed once. And Grandpa kept saying, well, Wayman, why don't you move that can? This is your favorite son. Move the can. But I think he was intent on proving his accuracy. Um, there are things in life that give us reason to fear. For all that distance from St. James to St. Louis, I lived in fear of Frank Paul distance. But here was Grandma always advocating for me, always being merciful, always wanting the best for me. And so I think about those things in our own world. The world seems to make a spit on us and makes us fearful, makes us afraid, makes us think that this can't possibly go on for very long. And I remember that Jesus is my advocate, that Jesus is the one who calls for mercy, Jesus is the one who calls for grace. Um, so that the world spittoon does not have to be me. Right? But saved by grace, and with God's mercy, and with love, and I am content with what the world throws at me, even if it's right between my legs, because God is going to save me. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's about all I can do with the spittoon. <laughs> Thank you. And especially with the mask up. Yes, don't try to use this with your mask on. <laughs> Just a warning, a friendly warning from your pastor. Okay, today's focus, the essentials of our faith are all centered around Christ. On the prayer list for today, I want to remember um, Give thanks for our veterans. Veterans Day is this week. And so I want to give thanks for all of those people who serve and sacrifice um, so that we might be able to worship freely and have our other dreams. Okay, so we'll remember the veterans. Um, I can't say that everything in camera, but I don't. Yeah, okay. Mallory's pregnant. Um, we are so thrilled. You know, she went to bed in the stuff and we got five days to the first one. So, um, we're just as excited as we can be. Huh? They're doing more testing tomorrow. Make sure everything's still going good. So. We just don't have enough grandchildren. So. <laughs> <laughs> all that doing. Uh, other joys? We have a new baby. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I've got that on the prayer list. Okay. Oh. Thank God the political ads are over. Yes. At least for a year, a little over, and then they start the two year cycle. So. Um, other joys? I. Finally got an apartment. Yes, Pam has got a roof over her head. She's got an apartment that her own. And she needs silverware. I'm going to just 
an advocate for you right now. Hey, a lot of me, but... The world has spit on her and not given her silverware, so she needs some silverware. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, what else? I'm sorry. Oh, Jessica, I'm sorry. I just pray that, um, that anyone who needs God can find God. Because sometimes we tell God that God doesn't tell us. Okay. <coughs> we need God. Okay, and when we go to concerns, and let me just read, I have a prayer list here. It says, uh, pray for President Trump, pray for President elect and Vice President elect Biden and Harris, pray that we work together as a country, both politically and in everyday life. We will do that. Okay. What else? Um, there's two concerns. Tucker is Sharon's daughter is in the hospital. That would be she's 15 years old and comatose. Last I heard, she was off the prayer. And then um, last night, Laura, Laura Lee's mother had a heart attack. Who? Laura um, Owens, Laura Lee. Her mother had a heart attack last night. Okay. She definitely made a difference. surgery for repair and they believe it's because she had radiation for her breast cancer so it's something if you know anybody I don't know if this is a new thing or not but if you know anybody you might want to kind of spread the word a little bit because that's what they're attributing this heart surgery is to the radiation so her name is Pat thank you you got it 
Okay, let us pray together a prayer for Christ's likeness, and then we'll continue in silence. O God, whose blessed Son came that he might destroy the works of evil, and make us the children of God, and heirs of eternal life, grant us, we ask you, that, having this hope, we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like to him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, world without end. Amen. <coughs> We 
pray for Laura's mother who's had a heart attack. We know that our bodies are just so very fine-tuned as instruments that when they don't work the way they're designed to, we have great concern. Be with Laura's heart doctors, with those who will be treating her, give them wisdom as to which treatment is the best. We pray for her quick recovery and strength. We pray for Claudia, who continues to recover from a broken back. God, her days must seem long to her, and the pain that is there, we have that has to be done. So we pray for your hand in her healing as you mend that back and put it back together. We pray for her strength, for her patience, and for her willingness to go forward and continue to pursue that healing. We pray for Willow, who has aspirated something and now has pneumonia. God, our pets are part of our family. They become very close to us. We would like Willow to be healed. We would like for this pneumonia to pass from her. And so we pray that the meds that she's been given and the wisdom of her vets will, will do just that. We pray for those who grieve the death of Mildred, Grandma. She was 104. We thank you for all the years of her life. And we pray that you would send your sense of peace on her family who had to say goodbye to her this past week until they should meet again in your realm. We pray for Fred who's going through life transitions. We give you thanks for the assisted living facility where he's at. Help him to, to bear this transition, another loss of freedom it seems to him. And we give you thanks for the one who is there to buy his car and offer to take him for drives. We pray for Pat, who's going to be having heart surgery to repair damage that may have been caused from another life-saving treatment, the breast cancer. Be with her as she has that surgery. Guide her surgeon's hands with great skill so that that repair might be effective and she might be restored to good health. And we thank you that you delivered her from breast cancer in the past. This day we pray for our president, Donald Trump, and for all that he must be going through since Tuesday night. We pray for his health. We pray for his well-being. We pray for his acceptance of, of what appears to be the loss of an election. We ask that the transition would be smooth from one administration to the next. That the various members of both presidential parties will cooperate with one another so that our nation is not left weak and one administration is not left play catch up. We pray for President elect and Vice President elect Biden and Harris as they are going these next 73 days to be moving closer and closer to their new elected positions. We pray for their wisdom and for their care in office. We pray for their safety. And we pray that we can work together as a country. That we don't necessarily agree politically, but we can agree as Americans. And we pray that that working together will spill over into every event of our everyday lives. 
God, we don't need to agree with each other all of the time to be friends. All of these things we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
She'd say, do you want a cookie? Yeah, I want a cookie. Okay, you can have one or the other, a chocolate chip or an Oreo. It'll make you crazy at four years old, right? Yes. No, it's not yes. One or the other. Choose this day which cookie you will eat. Choose this day. There's no doubt why in our house today there are chocolate chip cookies and Oreos. <laughs> but I like the chocolate chips the best. Christmas is coming up, I'll just say. <laughs> Joshua says to the people, choose this day. Choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day. Choose this moment. <coughs> and I think he's saying it with some sense of anger? Maybe? Anger? Because they come out of Egypt. They wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. Moses has taken them right to the verge of the promised land. And these people are still worshiping idols. Idols that they carried with them out of Egypt and idols that they acquired along the way. So that Joe, Joshua is now getting ready to take them, or he's taking them across the Jordan. And they're in a new place. They're in a new land. And they can have a new hope. But they have to put away the past. They have to put away the idols that draw them away from the God who has led them to the promised land. If they want to possess it, if they want to keep it, then they have to choose this day. Now this, this promised land, it was their hope through all of the wandering in the wilderness. It was the hope that they had that God's promise would be fulfilled. But they could not know the hope of the living God while they were worshiping something else. While they had these idols in their tents, little house gods and such. Joshua is saying to them, if you want to have hope as you enter the new land, if you want to have hope, then you have to worship this God who's led you this far. That's led you this far. In other words, you have to know what your faith is going to be. It can't be God one day and Isis the next or Osiris, or Horus, or any of the other gods of Egypt. It must be the living God then. I am who I am, God, who brought you out of Egypt. And the same is true for each one of us. Paul is talking to the Thessalonians this morning. And he's talking to them about the hope of their faith. And what he's telling them is if you want to remember what your faith is all around about, and if you want that hope, there are certain things that you have to hold tight to. Certain, not doctrines, I don't think they would have used that in those days, but certain beliefs that are the fundamental building blocks of what's going to get you through with hope. Thessalonians, were some of the Christians that would be persecuted for their faith. And so they needed hope. They'd come a long way in, in changing who they were to what they became. And Paul is telling them there are essentials to the hope which you profess. He says that one of the things that should give you hope is that Christ died for us. Christ died for us. Christ died for me, and Christ died for you. I think of the hymn, And can it be that I should 
gain an interest in my Savior's blood. And can it be that I should gain? Christ died for me. You know why Christ died for me? Because Christ needed to die for me. He took that upon himself so that I can now go to the foot of the cross and I can lay my burden there. I can lay that which separates me from God, not because God separates God's self from me, but because I separate myself from God. And I can lay that at the foot of the cross because Christ died for me and for you. We've often said in this church many, many times, we have a banner that we hang up around Good Friday, and it said, when Christ hung upon the cross, He had you in mind. He had you in mind. It's this universal salvation, and yet at the same time, it's very individual. Christ thinks of us. Christ loves us. Christ became a sacrifice for us. I'm reminded of a story that comes out of the Vietnam War about 12 POWs who were in a uh, North Vietnam prison out in the, out of, uh, out in the uh, jungle. And somehow the United States Army had gotten word to them that if they could escape, there would be a helicopter at such and such a date, at such and such a time, that would pick them up and take them back to freedom and liberty and health and wellness. And they slipped this explosive to the prisoners. It had a time delay on it of 24 hours. But they needed to get it right under the fence, closest to their hutch, so that when it blew, they could go out the hole in a hurry and make it to the helicopter. Someone had to set it. So one, uh, one person in that group of 12, he was the only one that didn't have any children at home. And he decided that he would be the one to go to the fence and to place the explosive so that they could all get out the next day. So he was on a run when he hit the fence. He went over it with ease. And he placed this explosive device under the fence. But from the other side, he found out he couldn't get back over. Mm. There was no room for him to run and clear the fence. And so he snuck along the fence, looking for a way to get back in. And at one point, he was discovered. And he was shot to death. Mm. But his sacrifice, made it possible for the other 11 to escape the next night. His sacrifice made it possible for 11 people held as prisoners and held in, in, in torture and misery to find liberty and hope and freedom again. It takes the sacrifice sometimes so that others can know freedom so that others can have the hope that Paul is reminding the Thessalonians that they have. And he says, the one who sacrificed his life for you is Jesus Christ. And so it is with all of us. Sometimes we're against the wall. Sometimes we feel like our lives are going to be overcome. Maybe it's with an illness or, or family pressure. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the guilt of things we've said or done. But there is a cross. And there is a place that we can lay our burdens down. A place where we can nail our sin permanently. And Jesus will take it. Because Jesus died for me. And Jesus died for you. And that's the great hope of our faith living upon this earth. Paul didn't stop there. Not only he said, did Jesus die for you, but Jesus rose from the tomb. He died, but he rose again. He rose again to show and to demonstrate that he has the power to do that. I mean, it's nothing. If Jesus stays on the cross, then Christianity, for me, is a big so what. 
If he died, but he didn't raise, there's no power in death. Two other people died on the cross when Jesus died. Amen? They didn't die for our sins. Jesus did. And the resurrection is proof that Jesus had the power to do it. And the power to proclaim to us that we can have new life. That we can experience resurrection while we're still living on this earth. We don't have to wait until we die. Jesus resurrected those people on that first Easter morning, Easter morning simply by showing up the outside the tomb alive. Don't you know that Mary Magdalene was resurrected when she saw Jesus and knew who he was? That Peter and John and the other disciples were resurrected when they saw who Jesus was. The good news is Christ died for our sins, Christ rose again, and Christ must rise in you. If we put our sins to death in Christ Jesus, then we must be resurrected as new people. The old has passed away, the Bible says, and the new has come. And the new is the work that Christ is doing to us through the Holy Spirit. We have hope that I have hope that I'm not going to be the same old Gary and we from now that I am today. Amen? Thank goodness. And maybe you wouldn't have wanted to see the Gary of 10 years ago. Or 20 years ago. I hit this church on fire. Huh? Sometimes I think I got a little obnoxious. And I'm not saying I'm not obnoxious now, I'm just saying I'm less obnoxious. <laughs> That's it. Jesus renews us, amen? There's a resurrection in our life. Christ died, Christ killed the sin in us. Showed us where to place it so that we could be resurrected, so that we could be new people, so that we could live a new life and bring that resurrection to others. We're serving spaghetti after worship today. I'm telling you, there's resurrection in a box of spaghetti. <laughs> there's resurrection in a pair of pants, in a warm shirt, a coat. There's resurrection in sharing a new jobs list that I'm getting every month. It's called a hot jobs list. There's resurrection in that. And we do it for the love of Christ and the love that we have for each other. I experience the resurrection. I must be an agent of resurrection as well. He died for us so that he could be resurrected in us. And that's our hope. That's our hope, Paul says. And he also says the best hope of all is that Christ is going to return and we're going to have an eternal future. Now you know where I'm going with this. My favorite biblical passage is the Revelation chapter 21. There will be no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain. For the former things will all have passed away. They will all have passed away. I'm looking forward to my eternity with Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to that eternity. That gives me hope about everything else. I'm going to a place where there are no braces. I'm going to a place where there are no canes. I'm going to a place where there's no addictions. Where there's no people losing their houses because of poverty or because they lost their jobs. I'm going to a place that's infinitely, infinitely, infinitely better than the place I am in right now. This place is pretty good. I like it. There's something better waiting. Yeah? There's something. I'm going to a place where dogs don't get pneumonia. How's that? We know what God is going to do. We're going to be reunited with God. That, that fellowship that was broken in the fall is going to be restored, and we're once more going to have an intimate relationship with God in heaven. Restored the way God created us to be. Who has hope? Who has hope? Thank you. Some of you. 
Have I not convinced some of you? <laughs> Get out of my church. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who has hope? Raise them. Oh, amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I have hope this day that no matter what, no matter what, that cross still stands. I have hope that no matter what, the resurrection will work in me and continue to make me a different person as I'm reconciled to God and as the Holy Spirit continues to perfect me in the love of God. And I have an eternal hope that life will go on and on and on for an eternity with the, with the Christ who said, I go and prepare a place for you Go to prepare a place for you. Here's hope. Here it is. Here's hope. Paul said these are the essentials of faith. The essentials of faith. Not so you have to worry about, can I get the doctrine down? But so that you would have hope in Christ Jesus. That this day can be the best it can be. Tomorrow will be even better. And eternity will be the best. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is the time when we take the offering. Uh, we don't pass the plate because of COVID. The offering plate is on the back table. If you'd like to drop your offering in there at the end of the worship service, for those of you who are watching by video, our address is Central United Methodist Church, 933 Argentine Boulevard, Kansas City, Kansas, 66105. Please stand for the doxology.
we will both sing for Bobby and then later pray for Bobby. <laughs> yeah, he's going down the hill with his foot on a banana peel. Other birthdays? Which yours? 22nd. The 20 what? 22nd. Of November? Yeah. Remind me when I get closer, okay? Because yeah. I don't want to do it now that miss you then. Okay. Happy uh, 64 December to the 16th. How old? Probably uh, 74. 74, <laughs> yeah. <it's> after. <laughs> 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 I've known Evelyn a long time. Every time, she, every time she cuts 10 years off her age, you know why I call her people live. <laughs> okay, happy birthday! God of grace and the God of joy and the God of peace go with you from this place by the presence of the Holy Spirit dwelling in your life. May you always be reminded of the essentials of our faith which give you hope in Christ Jesus. For it is in His name that we go forward to make it a terrific week. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. Help you get set up. I'm going to do 